Gnome Life, written by Will Jin and illustrated by Rien Portvillier, narrated by Fairy Princess Lolly. March. Peter sits in his bath. Actually, it's not a bath, since it has no spigots. It is a wooden tub. Peter made this one himself out of boards and two circular hoops to hold them together. It also has a wooden bottom. The boards fit together exactly so as to not let a single drop of water leak through. The tub is watertight. Fern has filled the tub with bucket after bucket of hot water, which she has heated upon the stove. After that, she puts in soap, which gnomes make out of a special soap herb. The soapy foam flows over the rim of the tub, but Peter will mop it up neatly afterwards. After preparing the bath, Fern winds her wool making a tight ball of it while Peter holds up the loops with his feet, which are sticking out of the sudsy tub. As he soaks, Peter plays the flute. By the merry sounds of his music, Fern knows that the water is perfect, not too hot and not too cold. Peter made the flute out of the roots of a nut tree. A flute made out of nutwood has the finest sound. When outside, Peter can use it to call others, since the sound travels for many miles. On the floor behind the tub lies a long-handled brush. Peter scrubs his back with it, since with his hands he can only reach his bottom and his neck. As soon as Fern has wound the wool into a ball, she starts to knit. For whom? For little Nora, the mouse. She sleeps in a basket. In a gnome house, there are always a few pet mice. They sleep in their basket in a corner of the living room, as dogs do in our homes. Lucy is Nora's sister. Fern has already knit a nice green sweater for her. Lucy looks into the mirror. She thinks herself very beautiful. She just cannot stop looking in the mirror. Beyond the tub in the corner, a candle burns, held upright by a hand. But don't worry, it's not a real hand. It is made of wood. Peter has carved it out of a log of lime wood and attached it to the wall. The candle is made of beeswax. Gnomes have beehives just like we do. But for a gnome, a bee is a much larger creature in comparison. Thus, they need only small portions of wax and honey, and the bees happily provide them. A wooden basin with a carved head of a duck sits on the floor. It was made by Peter's grandfather 500 years ago. There's a washing glove in it. When Peter climbs out of the tub, he dries himself off and dresses. He then goes outside to feed the birds and rabbits and mice and any other friend who is hungry. This has to be done every evening. When he gets home, Peter and Fern go to visit his old uncle, who has a terrible cold and is very grumpy because he is not able to go outside. Lily and Leaf are staying with neighbors on the other side of the forest so they will not be joining their parents. Peter and Fern are going to bring the uncle healing red currants, which contain a lot of vitamin C, from their cool, damp room beneath the house, where currants and other fruits and vegetables remain fresh all winter. Fern has put on a special purple cap and her nicest clothes. How beautiful you are, Peter says. I am going to kiss you. Enough of that, Fern says, blushing. It's time to leave. We have to watch out for falling fur apples, Peter says. And so, kissing the mice on their noses and locking up the house, they set out. A little wren joins Peter and Fern, just to enjoy their company, and to help watch out for falling fur apples. Hello, friends. This is Gone for Hammerhands. Thank you for checking out Fairy Princess Lolly's channel. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Use your troll hammer to ring that little bell icon to get notifications when she posts future videos. And if you'd like to support these magical creations, fly over to our Patreon and join the fairy family. Safe travels.